Higgins, as the kids are saying, is him. Higgins is him, and uh, he gets more than five and a half catches. What's going on, folks? And welcome into Monkey Night Fights Halloween Edition. Wow, Monday Night Football. We're back. Look at our guy, John McKechnie. Now, John, what's the Halloween costume? Uh, I'm Johnny Tracksuit over here. Not to be confused with Ted Lasso. Um, even though as we as we got on this call, I was like, oh, no, I'm going to be giving Ted Lasso vibes. But uh, alas, you know, I, I feel about as chipper as old Teddy boy. But uh, no, I'm a, I'm a little more edgy. I got my tactical glasses on. I got my track suit. You know, you don't know, you don't know what's going on behind these glasses. You don't know what's going on behind the glasses. Quote of the day. Yeah, well, you know what, too? I think it's the Ted Lasso personality. You come in, you always give off the positive vibes. Always a happy-go-lucky kind of guy, unless, you know, my Bears are playing or the or the Broncos are playing, in which case we're just bullying the primetime <laughs> shows. However, you know, the positive vibes are flowing. We've got a good game tonight, a little AFC matchup, a little rivalry. You got the Browns. You have the the Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow, kind of kind of the storyline against Joe Mixon there. And if you had to, if you had to get all positive and get, give me one line that you're looking out for here on Monkey Night Fight between these two quarterbacks, which guy do you think is going for the more between the two of them? Well, great question. You know, it's it's a it's a battle of Ohio, AFC North, uh, and you know, we, like you said, we piled on the schedule makers at, at many times uh, over the course of this season. But could there be a better uniform matchup for Halloween than the team that wears orange and black in the Cincinnati Bengals and a team that looks like a bunch of sentient Reese's Cups in the Cleveland Browns? So, I mean, it, it's just chef's kiss. Uh, well done to the NFL on this one. you got to give credit where it's due. Um, and as for what we're looking at numbers-wise here, Joe Burrow, obviously the big, big story is no Jamar Chase. How do they respond and I think a lot of people have been quick to be like, okay, it's just completely wheels up for T Higgins and for Tyler Boyd. We're going to get Hayden Hurst a little bit more involved, yada, yada, yada. But we saw, I, I have the sneaking suspicion that when it comes to the Bengals, they kind of need all three because earlier this year when T Higgins would be out, that offense couldn't get itself in gear. Um, and Chase provides that, that deep threat, that kill shot. Higgins kind of that like 10 to 20 yards, just eating up. Uh, chunk yardage and, and Tyler Boyd, the underneath guy. I think they kind of need all three. Now the Browns have been really poor defensively, both against the run and the pass. Um, but I still feel like the, this chase loss, especially with the quick turnaround coming off of it and how good chase looked last week. I'm thinking that, that maybe the Bengals go a little bit more towards the run and Burrow ends up with less than 275 yards. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to push back a little bit on that and just go with the more from what I've seen out of Joe Burrow lately, and you know, coming off his first 400 yard game, and then knowing what he does against the Browns in his career against the Browns, he's averaging 334.7 pass yards. Not bad. And I just that is so much higher than 270 and a half. And based off what I've seen from this Browns pass defense, there's just there's so many holes and. And you bring up the Jamar Chase point, but I really like how Tyler Boyd stepped into that role last week. I think I think that he could really, really shine on primetime, and people won't be so taken back with the Jamar Chase loss on the Joe Burrow side. I do think you're right. I do think it'll play into the game plan. I think it will affect Cincinnati's scoring ability. But as for Joe Burrow spreading the ball out to his weapons, as you said, Hayden Hurst, he could step up and have a big game. You have Tyler Boyd, and obviously, uh, as... as um, as one of our other friends on the show likes to call the uh, the alphas, the alpha receivers, you still have T Higgins. That's a Jim Coventry line for you. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. with with the uh, with the alpha receiver, at least one alpha still in with Jim Coventry. With the way that Joe Mixon has looked lately, I think Joe Mixon getting involved out of the backfield could be huge. And I'm not sold on the Bengals' ability to rush the ball. So all those reasons just are are pointing to me for the more for Joe Burrow. However, he's got Jacoby Brissett on the other side, 219 and a half yards, more or less on that one, Jim, or uh, sorry, John. I wish I was Jim. Jim's the man, but um, <laughs> Halloween costume a, for next year. That's a football guy through and through. Yeah, I'll have to get the bick out for that one. But, um, you know, well, 
It'll be tough to part ways with the hair. I'm trying to delay that <laughs> as long as I can, but, uh, you know, alas. Um, but when it comes to Jacoby Brissett, um, I do feel like the, the, the Bengals are going to have a lead here. So the Browns, you know, it's going to be ugly. You, like, this is going to be one that you're sweating the entire time. Like, I feel like Burrow, we're going to know pretty early on whether it's like, oh, maybe he's a little bit off or, oh, God, he's rolling. And, and you know, this 275 is too easy. Uh, with Brissett, it's going to be a battle this entire night. That's why we're going to be staying up till close to midnight on the, on the East Coast, trying to see if he can get to 220. I'm going to say he barely does it. Give me the more. Wow. You know what? Oh, you, you, I. Mm, it's just – see, it's it's nothing against Jacoby Brissett. He's filled in admiral, admirably. It's just – you have Nick Chubb averaging a ho- over 160 rush yards per game, leading the league with rushing yards, over 700 rushing yards. It's just, no matter what this Browns team is doing, even if they're behind, even, no, they just seem that like we're going to run it. This is yeah. what we do. This is our identity. And to be honest, God love them. At least we have a team in the NFL this year with all these surprises. Like, you know what? Death taxes Browns running the ball. And because of that, I'm going to take the less on Jacoby Brissett only because of that. Only because of the fact that I think Nick Chubb will cause enough problems, create some holes early enough that the game will be close enough. And then Joe Burrow, second half, Joe Burrow goes out and does his thing and then passes the ball. So, John, we're going back and forth, a little Halloween, a little trick or treat for the kids at home. (laughs) A lot of tricks, a lot of tricks. And now let's talk about Nick Chubb. I just kind of mentioned that the fact he's – he is bulldozing the NFL at this point, averaging over 130 yards per game, as I said. 85 and a half here, uh, 89 and a half now on Monkey Night Fight. So the line opened up at 85 and a half, now boosted an extra four yards. I think the people are I think the people are 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 right with the trends here. I'm not seeing much out of Cincinnati to give me a whole lot of belief in the in the run stopping ability. Getting after the quarterback, that's a bit of a different situation. But in terms of the run stop, there's not much there. I'm taking the more on Nick Chubb. You know, I've been going back and forth on, on this one, and now, now the numbers climbed up a, a little bit. Uh, I've seen projections, you know, somewhere in the, in the low 80s, and, you know, that, that's all well and good. Those are all based in, in facts and numbers and things of that nature. But, hey, man, like, it's Nick Chubb. The way that he's running this year, the way he's been running uh, since getting to the league, uh, since his days at Cedartown High School, in Georgia and of course at UGA, the guy's just a monster. Uh, and we know he's going to get fed. They feed the monster there in Cleveland, as you were alluding to. And you know what? I, I think that over the course of this game, a couple of big runs mixed in with the pa- fact that he's going to be pushing 20, 22 carries. Give me the more. Yeah. Go dogs. It just, Go dogs. I mean, and now I'm looking at the line, you know, just as we're on air here, doing a little line shopping and some places even have it at 83 and a half. So this really is, it, it is just seems like a, an attackable line for Nick Chubb. Anything under that 90 yard point, I just feel like is just, is, is, is almost like a Halloween treat. Maybe, maybe there's some, maybe it, John, is this almost a trap line? I mean, it, it certainly could be, um, you know, what, what if uh, that things just completely fall about fall apart for the Browns, but I think, at home, they're going to be able to keep it together and keep keep to their game plan. And if if they're keeping to their game plan, you know it's centered around Chubb. So we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll block out the haters. We're blocking it out with our with our attack glasses, and, and we're going with the more. Love it. You got the speedy vision going, and we're speeding right along with Amari Cooper on the outside. Sixty yards is what he needs to get the more. Fifty nine and a half here on Monkey Knife Fight. We're going back and forth with with the more or less with the Joe Burrow side of things. And then you went with the more with Jacoby Brissett. I went with the less. And because of my projected game script and just because I've seen Amari Cooper drop so many passes, so many drop balls. I was watching tape for this show uh, just last night after Sunday Night Football. And I actually cannot believe that this is the same Amari Cooper that was a Dallas Cowboy not two seasons ago. Yeah, he, he's just maybe a little bit content to stay in preseason mode until he gets a real quarterback. Uh, I, I think that might be the reasoning. Got a CFL it. quarterback up there. It's it's a tough scene. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to – oh, look at that. Look at that. Looking good. Um, yeah, it, if I'm going with the more for Brissett, it, Cooper is such a big part of that passing game. I almost – just by by extension, by default, 
have to go with the more for Cooper. So that this is going to be another uh, sweaty one. But uh, yeah, anytime that you're back in the, the Browns offense outside of the backfield this year, that's just kind of what what uh, you know what you're you know what you're getting yourself into. On the other side of the football, you have T. Higgins, five and a half receptions. That's what we're talking about right now. 80 and a half receiving yards. I think both of those are extremely gettable without Jamar Chase in the lineup. Obviously, he's going to draw the tough assignments, leaving Tyler Boyd to, to be, be – I think Tyler Boyd could have a huge one. But talking about T. Higgins, I think the double-digit targets are going to be there. And when there's double-digit targets, I trust an alpha receiver, in the words of Mr. Jim Coventry, uh, to go out and, and make at least 60% of those catches. So I'll, I'll take the more on the five and a half on T. Higgins comfortably yeah, Higgins as the kids are saying is him Higgins is him and uh he gets more than five and a half catches tonight yes yeah well that was that was all right easy easy money all right T Higgins time with the over on the yards over under on the yards the more or less on the yards there 80 and a half receiving yards now this one's that's a that's a high number that's that's up there but again you have no Jamar Chase and you have Joe Burrow, who's coming off of 400 yards and average over averages over 330 against this Browns defense. T. Higgins, I'll, I'll take the more. I will as well. Yeah, I think that these are good lines for, for T tonight. Also, John, just because it's on the screen and we're looking at it, this is a very interesting line. I'm going to throw a wrench into this uh, our rundown here. Kareem Hunt, 35 and a half yards. Does Hunt mix it up and get enough touches on the ground in, in this Nick Chubb show? to get the 35 and a half, because I'm looking at this, this exact contest right now. And I'm looking at a little trick or treat for Halloween. I think this could be a nice little treat for the, for our MKFers out there. So are, are you saying that you like the more? Or I am saying, I, I am saying I like the more, I, I think Nick Chubb, I think it's the change of pace, right? Kareem Hunt. It, it's not the touches that I'm worried about. It's, it's the fact that he could do this. If I'm, if I'm on the left side, I'm sweating the entire time because it takes one handoff and Hunt breaks it and he's gone. Realistically, two 19-yard runs, two 18-yard runs, and he's there. I like the more here for Kareem Hunt. I'm going to go with less. I, I think he get, I think the total yardage or the fantasy points is, is where I would go or I'd be a little bit more interested in the more for, for Kareem Hunt tonight. But I, I think that this ends up being like a 7-8 carry for like 32 yards uh, type of game. So you're close. Obviously, like you said, uh, that it's going to be – you're going to be uncomfortable the entire time because it takes just one rush for, for Cream Hunt to get there. Um, but I'm going to bet against him and go with less. All right, well, it wasn't as sweet as line as I thought it was. Well, let's get into a little touchdown dance. Halloween edition, throwing around candy. It almost like – I almost feel obligated to take Marshawn Lynch in this touchdown dance just because of, uh, of the Skittle thing. Mm -hmm. Although, you know retirement issues not playing in the game all of that there was another at, uh there's another candy incident on the sidelines this weekend at, at a minnesota game uh mo ibrahim gets i think sweet tarts or something on, on the sidelines I, I couldn't quite make out the, the confection but he was definitely getting fed uh off the field when while he was getting fed on the field because he got like 30 carries on saturday against Rutgers. Absolutely love it. Little college football action, getting get letting the people know. That's why we that's why we keep the tailgating guy around. You know, John, he's at all the all the tailgates, big partier, loves the Halloween stuff. All right, mm -hmm. John. I kind of alluded to the running backs. We're missing we're we're missing the Skittle guy, but you have Joe Mixon back there, goal line presence, and you have Nick Chubb. Pretty easy for me. T Higgins is the is the is the threat, as I think that the Bengals. We'll get this done. So I'll go Mixon, Nick Chubb, and T. Higgins, the three first names that you see there. And then if you're not sold on T. Higgins, I really like Tyler Boyd to have himself a game tonight. So that for me, uh, and I think that those are all great picks, hard, hard to really like move off of any of them as, as I create my own touchdown dance. I, I feel the strongest that Mixon gets in the end zone tonight. I'll, I'll take Higgins for the other one. And then, uh, yeah, sticking with the Bengals here. I'm going to go with Hayden Hurst as, as the last of the, of the touchdown dancers. I mean, he, he's got the, the, the red hair coming out of the or, orange and black helmet. Like it, it's, it's going to be a Halloween festival uh, there in the, in the Cleveland end zone uh, this evening with, with Hayden Hurst getting in there as well. Well, not only that, his target share has boosted dramatically over the last few weeks. And without Jamar Chase in the lineup, Hayden Hurst, a big target over the middle. You know me, I love my tight ends. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, a touchdown dance with a tight end, nothing wrong with that. Now, John, I know this is a football show. I know we're here to talk NFL. I'm actually here to talk CFL. That's my Halloween costume, folks. I'm a CFL fan. Few and far between, but we exist. We're loud and proud. We got some World Series action. Don't worry. We're not going to bore you with any CFL action, folks. We're not going to bore you with uh, the extra 10-yard field, the extra 10 yards in each end zone, and the extra guy. Not going to do that to you. It's classic. The American pastime, World Series baseball, why not do a little home run blast? John McKechnie, I, I, I used to do these shows throughout the season uh, for, for the MLB here on Monkey Knife Fight, and I almost just yelled at the top of my lungs, Aaron Judge. Home run by Aaron Judge. Oh, I, 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 wait, the Yankees are done? Oh, he's not even going to be a Yankee anymore. Ooh, Ooh, so much salt. I hope we don't have too many Yankee followers today. Come at me. I'm a Blue Jay guy. We got we got clobbered, but you guys lost Aaron Judge. Ha! All right. In all seriousness, though, I like Kyle Tucker. I think he's swinging the bat right now. Kyle Schwarber probably should have had a home run. Let's go with the Kyles, Kyles. And because I love Bryce Harper, I just love the guy. He's smashing pumpkins right now. I'm going with Bryce Harper. John, who you liking and who, who do you have in the World Series? Yeah, Br- Bryce Harper, for sure. Uh, he's going Billy Corgan mode tonight, smashing pumpkins, like, like you said. Um, I think Nick Castellanos is going to deliver a deep drive to left. And uh, I hope that this is not my last time on the microphone. Um, and <laughs> and then... <laughs> Look out, here it comes. And then uh, uh, on the Astro side of it, give me Jordan Alvarez. So, so a couple of fills and uh, Jordan, but I, I think as far as the series goes, as as not fun as it is, I got to go with the Astros. I just think that they kind of outlast the Phillies. The Phillies came in screaming hot. They've been an amazing surprise, but I, I think Houston is just kind of that inevitable, like slow glacier moving down the hill, and they, they're just, they're tough to stop. Uh, they got the, the bullpen just uh, electric, Every arm, I think they have the rotation advantage for the most part. I think the Astros get this done in six. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. When I was looking at the pre-series, kind of filling out a bracket challenge going into the MLB playoffs, I, I had the Astros knocking off the Blue Jays and then going on to win the World Series. And, man, it just they're such a deep team. Unless Verlander's pitching in the World Series, <laughs> you're in a lot of trouble. You're in a lot of trouble. Otherwise, hey, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a day out at the park. Oh, man. So now we've talked about – so we bounced around sports. I did not get your prediction. Oh, I just punched my microphone. Someone's deaf at home. Um, I did not get your prediction for Monday Night Football. I skipped right over it. Went right into the World Series. I got a little excited. John, what's going down on Monday Night Football? Browns versus Bengals. So I will take the Bengals 27 and the Browns 20. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I've seen a lot of people kind of fading towards the Browns in that rushing attack, but I'm all about Jer Burrow in that pass attack. And I think the Bengals cover the spread. And I think they look pretty convincing. Uh, they do it in convincing fashion and look convincing in doing so. Tongue twisters for myself. John, let the people know where they can get all find all your great content. Uh, so you can follow me over on Twitter at John's underscore tailgate. I also run our college football section over at Rotowire. So that's rotowire.com slash C football, all of our stuff all season long, all the way through bowl season, uh, everything you need for, for college football over there, rotowire.com slash C football. And of course the Halloween costume. Absolutely love it. Thank you, thank you. I, it it, it is a lot of effort. I mean, the speedy sunglasses, Hey, it, well, full disclosure, folks, I was going to try and do a little bit of an Andy Reid thing, just kind of sit here and, like with a Super Bowl and like eat a couple of uh, like double cheeseburgers. But, you know, I, P- production costs outrageous for that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I can't I can't be blowing the, the dollar ninety nine on a McDouble right now. Remember, I'm in Canada, so the dollars just it's, it's not on par with you guys. Like my McDouble's like seven bucks for your guys like one dollar sandwich so it's just it's it's just i had the budget had the budget accordingly all right folks thank you so much for for joining us on this halloween edition of our monday night football preview show that's john i'm connor enjoy halloween and enjoy the football